Good morning, YouTube. Coming at you again with another Saturday vlog from my dining room this time. I did not have to open the gym this morning, so I'm sitting down at my dining room table having breakfast. Let's see what I'm having. We've got four whole eggs, four slices of the sprouted grain toast with some spray butter on there this time, and some fresh strawberries because I was just craving some real fruit this morning. So I'm going to enjoy this, get dressed, head off to the gym. Um, got a little bit to do there today before we train in the afternoon. Um, and I have pull on the docket today, so you're going to see some deadlifts from this guy. So before we do all that, don't forget to do the YouTube stuff, like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. Share it with your friends, family, all of the above, and I will come back at you guys from the gym. All right, so as you guys know from last week, it is frisky pre-workout time. We got the energy drink, we got the pump. And one important thing I wanted to go over, take the time to do this pre-workout, <clears throat> excuse me, is planning the session that you're gonna do ahead of time so you actually have a game plan when you go into the gym. So here I have my logbook. I have obviously previous sessions to go over. And I usually take this time while I'm drinking my pre-workout to write out the training session that I'm gonna do. Now you can do this on your phone, while you're on the treadmill, warming up for the workout, uh, whatever works best for you. But having a plan when you go onto the weight floor definitely helps. You know, a lot of people just go in with a certain body part or you know whatever, and they just they just go about their business and they start randomly doing exercises. So have a plan in terms of exercise sequence, order, and then execute that to the fullest degree. And then obviously you can look back through notes to see did it work, did it not work. You can go over from there. Um, we have pull on the docket today, and as I said earlier, I am pulling from the floor, which I'm excited about. So I will check in with you guys next time. You'll see me. I'll have some weight in my hands. All right, so coming at you guys with a pull session here. So in my current training, I have two different rotations for pull, and pull just meaning you know back rear delts and biceps. So this one is one where I pull from the floor. However, uh, a lot of people like to start with the deadlift variation. I like to do something for lats ahead of time. And that's kind of for a couple of reasons. For one, it's really hard to get the lat muscle in and of itself short or contracted to the fullest degree when you're already fatigued. So it's good right off the bat to get the lat nice and short. So I'm choosing the single arm lat pull down here. And the other reason I like to do a lat movement before I pull something from the floor is to get my spine, my trunk, my core nice and warm before I pick something really heavy up from the floor. So this isn't going to take away from my deadlift. If anything, it'll actually enhance it because it gives me a better feel and a better brace. So I have this bench set up uh, a little distance from the pulley. See, I kind of have a plate on the floor. And I'm still playing around with different angles uh, for the single arm pull down in and of itself. But big key here is really just driving the elbow towards the hip and driving the shoulder uh, down. So once you feel you know, that you can't get that done and that your shoulder starts to you know come up towards your ear and you can't get that lat muscle fully shortened, uh, that's when the exercise kind of stops. So uh, I'm not just aimlessly pulling away at the cable. There's you know always a purpose when it comes to you know whatever exercise that we're doing. So after the single arm pull down, you saw from both angles there, we're moving on to stiff leg deadlifts. Uh, I really, really, really enjoy this deadlift variation because uh, it kind of takes the knee drive out of it that you would normally get from a conventional deadlift. And I just feel everything here from literally my neck to the back of my knees. So, you know, traps, you know, mid back, spinal erectors, glutes, hamstrings. I mean, I just feel everything working here. And uh, it may look like my back is rounded there, but that's actually just my spinal erectors that are just kind of showing up on my back. So, um, I'm making sure to keep a good tight core brace with each rep. I'm trying to rip the bar in half uh, and then lifting it off the floor there. And then after that, I like to move on to some sort of chest supported row just to give my lower back a little bit of a break after the deadlifts. And I tried this new one with the um, hammer strength row here, rowing both at the same time. I find that when I would use the upper handles there, I would get a lot of rear delts and wouldn't get a good squeeze through the middle of my back. So I actually chuck the seat down lower and I grabbed those lower handles there and they actually kind of diverge as you pull, which allowed me to get a really good squeeze in the kind of like the mid lower traps of my mid back. So that's definitely going to stay in the mix. Moving on after that, we're going back to lats with a D handled cable row here. So I have the adjustable D handle bar, have it set to where the handles are right at my sides. And again, with this one, I'm focusing on driving my shoulders down, not necessarily trying to get my elbows behind me. Uh, actually, looking back at this footage, you know, I, I could stand to actually not row back as far and keep my damn head still as well. So another good purpose of filming your sets is, you know, to lock in your own form. So in seeing me doing this exercise, my, my head was just moving all over the place. So 
Uh, I'm definitely going to lock that in next time. But really here, just focusing on staying on the lats, trying to keep the mid back and other muscles out of it. After that exercise, I did actually also do a rope pullover to finish off lats, but I forgot to film it just because I kind of hopped right to it. And then back to the cable row, I widened the handles out. I'm doing more of a rear delt row here. So focusing on the rear delts, getting a little bit of upper traps in here. This is kind of, I guess, face pull variation-ish, but focusing, like I said, more on the rear delts with this variation in particular. So the handles are wider. Uh, the elbows are driving out a lot wider than you saw with the previous row and just hitting a different area of you know, the posterior there. And then at that point, that exercise was done hopping right over to the logbook to make sure I don't forget how many reps I did. So you can see, as I mentioned before, the logbook is key, you know, when it comes to all this stuff and making sure that you're actually progressing and, you know, tracking your sets and logging over time. Obviously, you're not going to progress in a linear fashion every workout. That's not how things go. But, you know, you need to make sure you're tracking your progress just to make sure that your program is working. You know, the way to know that you're doing the right amount of training volume or the right amount of training in general the right exercises, you know, for what feels good for you, you, you have to be tracking your progress. You can't just be shooting from the hip every time you go into the gym. So have a plan, execute it, and then you can make adjustments based on that. Finished off with just some bicep curls. You know, this is just basics, kind of boring stuff. Line up the preacher curl, lock it in, and then just squeeze from there. So that was the last thing I did on this pull day. Hope you guys enjoyed the full training session. And if you have any questions about how I like to set things up, leave some comments down below only because I missed filming it last week. Here is the post-workout Rice Krispies. Protein shake got poured over top. One scoop of Core Pro. 120 grams of Rice Krispies. Lots of carbs going down. And I'm gonna enjoy this because I'm starving and I'm tired, so I need to eat. So if you're trying to buy Rice Krispies and you live near me, I'm sorry. I, I had to do it. The rice, or rice shortage right now, Saw so all these bad boys at Dollar General, had to scoop them up. Acme was out, Target's been out, Walmart's been out, everywhere's been out of these puppies. So, got me a little half dozen right here. This should keep me stocked for a couple weeks or so. I swear I'm not crazy. All right, last meal of the day about to go down and we're doing a little twist on breakfast for dinner. I don't even know if you call it dinner, it's 9.30 at night. I just gotta eat this, but I'll show you guys what I'm having because it is a little bit different. So here I got four servings of egg whites with a little bit of hot sauce on there for flavor, obviously salt and pepper. And then two servings of this, um, I believe it's called Ant Maples Pancake Mix from Aldi. It's basically Aldi's version of uh, Kodiak Cakes. And I have some 90% dark chocolate kind of melted on there. You know, not really one for presentation. And got some tea, obviously. So that is it for the day. I'm gonna dig into this because I'm starving. Hope you guys enjoyed the training session and all the other clips throughout. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, share, do all that YouTube stuff. And I'll see y'all next time.